Hey everybody, I'm going to go over this Welder Performance Qualification Database that's written in Microsoft Access. It may be something that's useful to you. It doesn't do any code checking, nothing fancy like that. But uh, I'll go ahead and go over it if you're interested in it, I'll be selling it. Uh, you can download a demo version. But anyway, here we go, how it works. I've got information about welders. I can jump to specific welders. I can see their tests that they've made, production welds, continuity info. That kind of information, so we'll close that. Other thing I have is weld test ranges. Okay, and there's a warning there that if you change one of these weld test ranges, it's going to change it for everybody that's previously qualified uh, using that test. So the information for the ranges of the actual test and the qualified ranges are all put in here. If I edit something here, it's going to change it everywhere I've referred to this test. And there's multiple tests in the demo version. These are just for information. These may or may not be accurate, so you need to make sure you look at the code yourself. Close it form. So the way that I do a welder test entry, click that button. I'm going to click Add New down here. Pick a test date. Pick a welder out. We'll go with uh, I should have been a fitter. And we'll pick a test out form. I can check here if it's company witnessed, put the company that they were tested for, if it's someone besides my company that's registered to the software. By default, this one, of course, was being a demo version, it's going to put that information in there. Who the person was. Put in all I don't see well. It's I can't see well's cousin. That's got that information done. I picked out a welder, picked out a test. So the weld test details. Right here, this shows the variables, the actual variables and the range qualified based on the test we picked out. We'll go ahead and look at the inspection test and certification. This has to be filled out for each individual test. So visual. one accept. Put in some remarks if we want to. The same thing can be done for your bins. You can pick it out of a list. It's not going to fill anything else in for you, but it will give you that part right there where you don't have to do it. So we'll put side bins. One. Remarks. Two bins. One G. So you'll fill in this information. I suggest putting NA and all these other blocks, or maybe I'll change it. I don't know. Laboratory, if you tested them yourself, your company, then of course that would be your company's name, and I would suggest using this test ID up here, whichever whatever shows up in the box. That's going to always be a unique, unique number for an individual welder test. If you use an outside lab for any part of it, the visual or the bend tests or radiography, Put the lab there, their test number, so on and so forth. I'm just going to put 38. 38. By default, it's going to add me as a test supervisor. You can change that for the demo program. Put in accept. Here's the test supervisor statement. You can change that if you want to. And I can put in comments. Make those comments too long. It may force your WPQ to be more than one page. Name here for the manufacturer, the contractor, who's authorized. The person authorized doesn't have to be the same page as the person that witnessed the test. Okay. Let's save changes. If I want to see what the WPQR looks like, click that. I'm going to select no for print. Now I can just preview it. Go ahead and zoom in on it. And you can kind of see what it looks like. Okay. There's some watermarks, some extra text that's on there because it's a demo. But again, this is not valid records. This is just for the demo. We'll close the print preview. We can close this form. There's also a project form for you to put in individual projects and then add welds. And you can also just see project welds by themselves individually and scroll through those. That information is used for 
a list of production welds that's been performed by that welder what date that they welded on them. Also uses to update the continuity information. It'll let you know if there's a uh, someone welded outside of their continuity. There's one right there. Test date 7-1. First test 10-30. Last test, last weld test date, or last weld date was 3 22 So they're much from test to their first weld, that was good. Much from their first weld to the last weld, 41. This will pop up here. You're not going to be able to edit it. So this stuff for the continuity and the production welds is just a little bit of informational stuff. Uh, you know, make sure that everything is showing up right for you. But anyway, so that's the extent of it. Program database, you have to have Microsoft Access running on your computer. Uh, if you don't have Microsoft Access, you can free download the runtime version, I'm pretty sure, and it should run with that. But you definitely want to check out the demo before you decide if you want to buy it. Uh, right now I'm selling it for about 100 bucks. Once I get some more features, it may go up a little bit. And who knows, maybe nobody's interested in it. But if nothing else, it'll kind of let you see an alternative method to saving welder performance qualification records. Hopefully this helps.